This is the LCD screen for the Creality Ender 3 V2 and Ender 3 S1 3D printers. And this is the customizable mount that I made for the screen. In this video, I'll show you how I made the mount, three different attachments for the mount, as well as how you can customize this model to suit your own needs. Let's get started. A few years ago, I made a mount for the Ender 3 V1 for the Universal 3D print enclosure that has become one of my most downloaded models. So I decided it was time to make a model for the LCD screen that comes with the Ender 3 V2 and Ender 3 S1. A few decisions that I made early on were to make the mount in landscape orientation since that seemed like the most logical orientation when mounted. I wanted to be able to make the files printable without support so I made them in multiple parts. Another goal was to attempt to make it easy to actually assemble without having to purchase special nuts and bolts from the hardware store. Reverse engineering the mount was harder than I thought it would be, especially the mounting plate. Unfortunately, nothing was symmetrical. I generally try to do CAD in a symmetric manner when I can, but apparently, Creality doesn't share the same mindset. Even the chamfers on the edges are different on the right than on the left. Since there wasn't much symmetry, I ended up just measuring around the perimeter of the LCD screen and basing most of the profile sketches off of that. Another factor that complicated things was that the design has these two posts that are used to engage with the mounting location, as well as these tapered plastic ridges that help secure the screen in its original mount. I opted to just make the posts fit securely within the mounting plate since I felt like the guides were a little overkill. I also originally assumed that the posts were in the center of the ridges, but that turned out to be incorrect as well. After a few attempts, I got the plate to fit well, so I moved on to the mounting arms. So you can see by the design that it's relatively similar to the previous models that I did for the V1 Enders, but the big thing that I changed was I added user parameters. So instead of having to go purchase individual nuts and bolts for this design, I made it to where you should be able to use some spares and just update the model uh, according to the sizes of those spares. And that was the whole goal with this, was to make it to where no one had to go buy anything extra. They just needed some filament and a 3D printer to make these parts. So here I'm going to update the shaft diameter of the bolt, and you'll see here that everything dynamically updates. As soon as I click enter, you see that the hole there got wider so that it could accommodate a wider bolt. And then here I'm going to change the bolt height. So it's important that that bolt is recessed enough that the LCD screen can sit flush there. And here uh, you can see that if you had a, a bolt with a larger head, it would fit uh, within the design now. And then here I'm updating the width of the nut. So if your nut is wider, you can update that value. And now you can see that it can accommodate a wider nut there. And then some other values that are adjustable is the shaft length. So obviously there's a lot of different bolt shaft lengths. So here, if you had a 30 millimeter shaft, uh, this would update and work with your bolt that you have. Another value that's adjustable is the angle that the screen sits at. So currently it's 30 degrees. We're about to update that uh, to 40 degrees. You can see here, this is the angle that uh, we're working with and as we update it, you can see that the screen changes positions and then the angle has updated. Another customizable parameter is the arm length. Depending on where you mount the screen, you might want the arm length to be longer or shorter. So here we're updating it from 30 to 50 and you can see how the arm length increased there. So that might be useful for some of you as well. Another feature of this mount in particular is it can be mounted vertically uh, as I'm showing here in CAD. So if you imagine the table being under the mount now, uh, you can see how that might be advantageous depending on your setup. Another benefit of this mount is you can adjust the screw hole as well. So we're about to update the screw head diameter so that the a recessed portion would be a little bit wider to accommodate either a washer or a larger head on your screw. And then here you can also update the screw shaft diameter. So if you have a larger shaft on the screw that you're using, it'll also update to accommodate that shaft. So there are three different options for mounting the faceplate. There on the left is the screw in version that we've been looking at with the two screw holes and then this version is the one for the universal enclosure. And then here in the middle is the stand version. It can just be set freely on the table. Also made an additional set of files for the 4.3 inch touchscreen that some of the enders have. So if you have that screen, please look into these files. They have parameters as well, but they'll be located in a separate link. 
Here's the printed version of the screw-in model. You can see that there's two screw holes on both sides for mounting. And here's that same version, but oriented vertically. This is also an option with that mount, so it might be useful in certain situations. And this is the universal enclosure version of the mount. You can see that it's situated under the plexiglass, so it uses the weight of the enclosure itself to kind of hold it in place. And last but not least is the stand that I made for the mount. You can see here it's relatively simple, but I think it'd be a great option for some of you that don't have the universal enclosure and don't want to mount anything uh, permanently to your table. So hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you consider subscribing and liking the video, it would really mean a lot to me. Thank you so much.